The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. A story about a woman who roughly 15 years ago saw for the very first time in the newspaper a piece of advertisement that said, please pray for this and this person. The woman here sees the sign, terrible story, a young mother, she's not well. She decides, I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to pray for her. She writes down. She looks a place to write down. She's not going to forget. She sees there's a new notebook on the table. She opens the notebook. She writes first line, first page, this woman's name, saying to Eileen. A few days go by. She has another name. She thinks to herself, I got to say to Eileen, you know what? I'm going to write it in the same place. That way I don't forget. That one name became two. The two names became 10. The 10 names became 100. And slowly but surely, this notebook became completely filled from cover to cover with the names of people who needed a refuah shaleva. Every day she would pray for them. The man says, my husband, my father, her husband used to say as a joke, you know, this, this is a beautiful thing that you do, but it takes you so long to finish praying because you say everybody's name each and every day. He says, I don't have any more time with my own wife. But secretly he was proud. He used to bring her home names from the shul. And that became a family tradition. Wherever anyone went to a different synagogue, they would go and swipe the the refuah and my names, copy them down, bring them to the mother. And the mother would add them to her book, which eventually became called in the family, the Bikur Holim Notebook. One year, two years, three years, the notebook becomes two, becomes three. And every day, she says, refuah shalema for each and every name. Not a day goes by. After 15 years, the man says, my father started making fun of my mother. One day at Shabbat lunch, he said to her, Mommy, you're saying Tehillim for these people every single day, every single name. Half the people on your list are probably dead. She says, Mo'ayib, how could you say that? What are you doing? How could you say that? People are dead. I'm saying, Rufu He says, look, it's been 15 years. My mother looked to all of us, the kids. She was like trying to get our support, but we all like nodding our heads. Like, you know, it is true. You were praying for a lot of sick people. You know, 15 years later, odds are a good number of them are no longer with us. She says, look, you know what? I'm going to say it anyway. Maybe it will bring them a rifu'ah shalema in Shamayim. It will bring them a, a rifu'ah shalema in heaven. We all laughed. It was ridiculous. Bring a rifu'ah shalema in Shamayim. But you know what? She carried on every day. Not a single name missed. It was a short while ago that one day at the Shabbat afternoon, my mother all of a sudden had a seizure at the table. And she dropped on the floor. No screams, no yelling, no pain. One second she's sitting with us. One second later, she has an aneurysm in her brain. Her body is on the floor, lying there. We don't know what to do. We call Hatzalah. They come, they pick up the body. They rush into the hospital. And we're all sitting there thinking to ourselves, you know, it's Shabbat afternoon. She hasn't yet said her Tehillim list. We're going to say her Tehillim list. And in that merit, we should be able to be a, to see her Ashley Mafia, our own mother. They divided up the many notebooks. She was already an expert at going through them. She knew the names by heart. But we divided the many notebooks, and still it took us ages to get through the names that she prayed for each and every day. By the time Shabbat was over, we rushed down to the hospital, only to be met by the doctor. And the doctor says to us, I'm so sorry, there's nothing that we can do. There's really no hope. There's no brain activity. Be prepared to say goodbye to your mother. It's only a matter of hours. The family was broken. We let everyone in the family know. And one of the nephews heard the story. And he started to get everyone together. He rounded up hundreds and hundreds of people to go to a synagogue, to a kines, to pray for this mother, for this grandmother, that she should stay alive, that she should stay with us. It's meant to start at 8.10, 8.15, excuse me, the prayers. And we're there in the hospital. And all we can see is the numbers going down. All the monitors slowly, slowly descending. Until a short while later, the doctor called us in and said, it's time. We walked into my mother's room and we saw the machines go to flatline. Everybody cried. Everybody asked mechila. Everybody said goodbye. And we walked out of the room, leaving our poor departed mother. 8.05. A few minutes go by, and the nephew calls from the shul to say, I just were about to start. I just wanted to put this phone on next to the hazan so that everyone in the family could hear, and please put the phone next to 
grandma's bedside so she should be able to hear the tehillim. And the man says that my sister was about to say, don't, never mind, it's too late. When I grabbed the phone from her and I said, thank you very much. You know, when they're ready to start, please call. We're going to put it on loudspeaker. And he hangs up the phone. She says, what do you do that for? Why did you tell them that she's gone? And I said, and there were tears in my eyes. For the last 15 years, mommy said to Elim every single day, for lots of people who were dead, they can't say it once for her. The Tefillah will help her in Shammai. A few minutes go by, and the phone again rings, and they turn it on, and the sounds of Tehillim fill the waiting room. Tehillim for a woman who's already passed away. David. One after the next. Maskele David. Next, next, next. They're praying. Everyone's, you can hear the sound. And finally, at the end of the Tehillim, on the phone, they're about to turn off the phone and they start hearing screams. They're preoccupied with the prayer so they're not really noticing, but then they see people running past them in the hospital. The doctors and nurses are running in and out, back and forth, until they see that they're all running through the waiting room and into the room where their mother was. They run into the room and they see her mother, the mother who passed away away already 25 minutes ago, surrounded by doctors and nurses. And the doctor turns to them and he says, I don't know how to tell you this. But just a minute ago, one of the nurses noticed that your mother's foot was moving. We brought in the machines. And we brought your mother, who'd already passed away, back to life. Maybe it will be a refuah shelema for them in Shammai. The man says that notebook. Now every member of the family has one too. And I think that as people hear about the story, there will be more notebooks in Am Yisrael and many new homes. Rabutai, it only takes a small step for Borei Olam to see that you are trying. Once Borei Olam sees the care and concern in your heart for another Jew, then Borei Olam says, what about you? Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. StoriesToInspire.org